If I was learning to solo over a new tune, I'd really want to make sure that I can do the basics first and not jump ahead of myself. In my previous lesson, I covered soloing over the A section of autumn leaves with a maximum of three notes. One, two, three. Where I went like... And trying to be creative with that, you know, using different rhythms and, and things like that and just trying to hear everything rather than just playing stuff because I know it works. Today's lesson is an extension of that, just bringing in a couple more notes. With the whole emphasis really of this, of keeping things simple, making sure you hear everything and hear everything before you play it. Not getting stuck in ruts and just playing the same things, but you know, each time you play it, it will be a different experience and you'll create a different melody, hopefully. I think it's a more musical way to start than, you know, two octave scales and arpeggios for every chord. Not that that's not a valid approach, I just don't think it's where I would start. So last time we just used the root, the second, the third. Today we're gonna to bring in the seventh and some chromatic. So the structure of the lesson is as follows, playing with 7, 1, 2, 3, 2A, two adding chromatics, 2A, adding chromatic enclosures, and 3, finding efficient moves through the chords. All the notation, all the tab you see on the screen is available as a PDF, just check the description. So first off, we're going to work with so the seven, one, two, three. So we're going to grab the seven beneath the root. So here, so say here's an A, the seventh is a tone beneath if it's a minor seventh. If it was a major seventh, it would be a semitone beneath, but it depends on whether it's a minor or major chord. So we're going to go for the A minor chord. We've got G, A, B, C. In the D7 chord, we've got C, D, E, F sharp. G major seven chord, F sharp, A, G, A, B. C major 7 chord, B, C, D, D, F sharp minor 7 flat 5 chord, E, G sharp, sorry, E, F sharp, G, A, B7, A, B, C, D sharp, E minor, and you got D, E, F sharp, G. And learning to improvise with that. that doesn't have to be complicated things so and just see what you can create with those four notes on each chord very simple little ideas but again if you can't hear the simple ideas don't go chasing more complicated things yet so what we're going to do next is bring in some chromaticism what's chromaticism chromatics you have things like the chromatic scale like so on where you just keep playing every note because it's like E, F, F sharp, G, keeps going up the musical alphabet. The way to start to use chromaticism, if you've got like an A, and that's the note you're going to play against this A minus 7, a simple thing you can try is like approaching that A from a semitone beneath, what we call a chromatic approach note. You could do that to each chord, like A is D7, so I'm approaching the D from a semitone beneath, G major 7, approach the G from beneath, same with the C and the F. It's like tense, release, tense, release. And we could put that within our lines. So we could have something like. So the first one, that puts a chromatic between the seventh and the root. There. starting to sound a bit jazzier with that and then on the D7 I did it also between the seventh and the root that note and the G I put it different place because it works nicely before the third that, that note hey listen to that Christian like and see I'm starting to find these ideas because I'm just working with this limited pool the C was the same sort of idea and there was a nice amount of chromatism on the F sharp minus 7 flat 5 and the B and the E as you can hear what the chromatic note offers is just a little bit of an interesting sound um, breaks up 
the kind of vanilla feel that you get just from using chord tones purely. So I suppose the, the big takeaway there, if you've got an arpeggio like A minus seven like that, you could try and approach any of the notes. So if I approach the roots, I go G sharp A, then go C, E, G. But I could also put one before the C, so I could go put a B before it. There. I could put a D sharp or an E flat before the E. Or I could put an F sharp before the G. And there's, there's a bit more to it about where you want to place these notes, but that would be just like a basic start for you with the chromatics. Another layer which would be nice to add in, you know, after you can do that, is a chromatic enclosure. So sort of, quite often that's what's referred to as like a scale note above and a chromatic beneath. But if you take an A minor seven chord, it would be... Over this song anyway. And that's like a tone above, semitone beneath, there's the target. Got an example which I'll put on the screen and it's just using those ingredients root second third and seventh plus the odd chromatic so a minor that's a nice little chromatic enclosure second third seventh and then same line on the d7 and similar ish idea got a chromatic before the, the major third there uh, and then the, the the c's a little bit busier chromatic before the seventh though at the end and then it gets a little bit busier here that's a chromatic enclosure of the F sharp da, 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 da. going down there so that's that's finishing on the seventh and then the B7 got that nice chromatic chromatic bit at the end where is it just make sure I play it the same way it's written and then sort of just a sort of Nice little finishing line on the E minor. So there, that was just using the, some of those chromatic ideas. So still using one, two, three, and seven, but approaching some of those notes from a semitone beneath. My final way, which I think is a really fun thing to explore, is finding the closest moves to the chords. And that's, instead of like, you know, if you're on an A and then you go to a D chord, jumping from A to D, you try to find notes which are either the same between the chords or they're very close. So take an A minor, C is the third of that chord. It's also the seventh of the second chord, D7. So we're gonna stay there, and then go to this B, which is the third of the G chord, the third chord. It then becomes the seventh of the C chord. Go back up to a C for the F sharp minor, seven flat five chord, it's the third of that one. Then go back to B, because it's the root of B, and stay on B, because it's the fifth of E. And that would sound like this. C, C, B, B, find the C again. Find the B again and stick with the B. And you can obviously build ideas off that, like this. So you create a very efficient and simple line. We've got another example of that starting on a G, so the seventh of A. Go down to the third of D, stay on that one, back to the, and then back down. These could be called like guide tones. Um, I just think it's like voice leading through the chords almost, like you're just trying to find the nearest note and it's, it can create some really cool little unexpected things really and that efficient move, I and mean, it could be as simple as what I just played or you could have a, you know, a couple notes um, being very restrained. And again, if you can't hear those simple melodies, then, you know, that's where you need to start. You need to start with creating really basic ideas over these chords. I'm just showing you ways to think about how you engage, how you think when you practice. So, couple thoughts. Do you need to play in time when you're practicing this stuff? No. You don't need to put a backing track on, you don't need to work with the whole form. You could just work with one or two chords or like the A section as I'm doing there. Get confident with that first. Work on your ear, play a chord, try and sing a line, and then see if you can play that line that you've sung. If not, work out a line, then, you know, hear it again, sing it, play it, sing it, and work on hearing things more. Once you can, once you can do basic things over those changes, 
in sort of free time and you truly are hearing it, then introduce the backing track or even just a looper with just the first section as I've got there. You don't need to work with all of the form. Which brings me to, you know, if you want to check out some other videos from myself, then check out my video on portioning the changes, make your life easier when working with these songs. And another one that might be useful is my lesson on how to learn the notes of your chords. So thank you for tuning in today. Uh, any comments or questions on how to practice this stuff or anything I've covered, then do leave them below. Uh, until next time, you take care.